comparing after a breakup. That's the conversation we're going to have here today on Relationship Thursday. How you guys doing? This is Ron Supply Myers, author, podcaster, and your uplifting life partner. Now, first, let's deal with this comparing issue to begin with. I've said many times, and I'll say it many more times. If you get out of the comparing business, you will see your life in a whole, whole different arena. I had a gentleman ask me one time, he was, we were talking about uh, your partner gaining weight, that type of stuff, and made the comment, well, if, if your wife, girlfriend gained 60 pounds, would that be a reason to leave or uh, get out of a relationship and that type of stuff? And my response, of course, is if you didn't have anyone, any other woman to compare her to, would we even be having this conversation? And we know the answer is no. It wouldn't even be a conversation. So that tells you it's a bad conversation. The comparing is why we're having, the, again, the conversation is because it allows him or those who think like him to look around at other women, look at their size, look at their outer beauty or whatever the case may be, and then turn around and compare that to the state of which his girlfriend wife currently is. Obviously, when he was dating her before she picks up the 60 pounds, he thought the world of her, wanted to go run around and share the world so everybody could see his prize. See the problem there? He was looking at her other than who she really is. He was looking at her as like a trophy instead of who she actually is as an individual. And that's the way we need to judge people as an individual, not this, this uh, uh, thing that the world has tried to tell us, you know, the external beauty and that type of stuff. And uh, man, even the external, I get a lot of you guys in trouble because you'll judge a partner based on that and put up with a bunch of garbage and let them treat you any way you any way they want to because of the external beauty. So you can walk around again and people look at you like, whoa, she's with you. Folks, it ain't worth all that. And that's why I won't throw names out there, <laughs> but I've seen certain stars where people are amazed that the woman has been divorced on a few occasions. They're like, you know how, look at her. You know how fine she is? It's like, man, I'd put up with anything to be with her. Yes, you would. In the beginning, as, as with human beings, we always want what we can't have. That's called being ungrateful. And we're very good at that as human beings, unfortunately. Because what happens with the woman with the beauty, the same thing with the cars, the same thing with all the external stuff, all that stuff is beautiful and it's attractive when you don't have it. But when you get it and you get the person that comes with that external stuff, you start to realize it's external stuff. <laughs> and eventually it's not going to make you happy. And eventually you're going to want out of that relationship. That's why I've seen so many women that big star names. And again, I ain't going to throw people out there that people are, are shocked that anybody would divorce them, that anybody would turn around and cheat on them, especially when maybe they're famous and their partner is. And they're like, man, he was lucky to be with her. I mean, she put, I heard somebody say that about some particular star. And they was like, yeah, that's why you got to stay in your, in your realm. She shouldn't have been messing with uh, someone that wasn't famous. Whatever. That's such a silly conversation because people that are both famous, they get divorced too. It's amazing how we try to rationalize stuff. He can make the same money as her. They still get divorced. Why people try to make these things into something they not? I have no idea. The reality is that the two people don't match, they don't match. It doesn't matter about whether he has or she has or they don't have or don't have. If we, if the chemistry, if we don't click as a unit, we don't click as a unit. External is never, ever going to make a relationship work. Let me repeat that. The external will never, ever make a relationship work. Now, with that said, there are people in relationships that tolerate each other. That's not a relationship that's working to me. They're putting up with each other. That's not a relationship that's working to me. 
There's no intimacy. They're putting up with each other because of the external stuff. And they say, see, it's working. No, it's not. You ain't happy. You don't even want to come home. You're not excited when you see the person. Folks, that's not working. That's not working. You're tolerating because of the external stuff. And it's not healthy. Life is too short. So anyway, if we could get out of the comparing game, what does that leave us with if we're not comparing the external? That's why, again, you guys heard me talk about FICO scores and, 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 and credit reports and, and uh, what's your, uh, your uh, let me see, your, uh, your tax return, all that stuff. That's external stuff. Don't tell you nothing. I know. Some of you are going to try to rationalize and tell me what it tells you. It tells you nothing except the fact that they made some money or they didn't make money. They paid some bills or they didn't pay some bills. But it doesn't tell you why they didn't pay the bills. See? Still don't know. People have real issues that occur, and that's why their credit score or whatever. But anyway, even from an income perspective, things happen. They could have been making a million dollars last year, this year, because of what happened with COVID or anything else could occur, and their business went bank. Now they don't have money, and all of a sudden you say, see, look at them. They ain't no good. Folks, you get to know people. But anyway... This comparing business, man, <laughs> yeah, I keep, keep getting off of that. <laughs> Get sidetracked with all this other stuff. But the bottom line, because I think you guys probably already understand just with the, the first comment, it's probably pretty clear. Comparing, it's just, it's just bad. It's, that's why they're saying when we say the grass is always greener on the other side, that's comparing. And if you took the time, and I know some of you have heard this before, if you quit looking at your neighbor's grass, and you actually took the time to, to water and take care of your grass, it'd be green too. Maybe even greener than theirs. But you're spending too much time watching, comparing to what they have, not taking care of yours, and yours will fall apart. And that includes relationships. If you quit comparing your relationship to other people, quit comparing how your woman looks on an external or even her attitude, her demeanor, whatever. This is not about looking at what the world is looking for. This is about looking at your relationship with this particular individual. And that's why even the weight thing. Instead of, to me, a better conversation is not she gained 60 weights, 60 pounds, 60 weights, 60 pounds should I be in a relationship with her. The question should be, why did she gain the 60? And what can we, we, notice that word we, me and her, what can we do to address the issue that created the 60-pound gain? See, that's what a partnership is all about. And those are the people that you're actually looking for, not the person that's comparing you to this myth or this, this vision they see outside and they're trying to make you fit that. That's why I always say when people are trying to change you, they're actually telling you, I don't like you. And so they want to create you and make you into something they want you to be. Folks, you're not here for that. You were never born to be someone else's uh, uh, ideal, someone else's dream, someone else's, I know, I know some of you say, that is what I'm looking for, I'm looking for my dream. That's not your job as an individual to be their dream. You guys follow me? Now, if you happen to fit their dream, beautiful, but it's not your job to be their dream. You guys understand at least the difference of what I'm trying to get to? So this comparing, we got, so I had a, um, and, and, and the reason I wanted to touch on this is because I was having the same conversation. Uh, we're talking about comparing like after a breakup, which is what this one was really about. At first, I wanted to address this comparing thing and how we need to eliminate it and why we need to eliminate it. But what happens is if you get in a relationship and let's say there's a whole bunch of things about this person that you truly like. But then as you start to date after that person, you start to compare the person that, th that you're sitting in front of with the person that you're no longer with. Well, she wouldn't do that or he wouldn't do that or she would open the door or he would open the door or he would, you, you start doing this comparison game. Folks, you're doomed. Your relationships are not gonna work again. Comparing is dangerous. Now, with that said, we can take 
from the previous relationship. Because trust me, there's a reason they're your ex. And you guys heard me say that before. There's a reason they're your ex. I'm not saying that they can't get their stuff together. You get your stuff together. And later you guys end up together. That could, that could happen. I'm never, ever going to be a person that tells you to go out here and change yourself so that you can make that a reality. This ain't all. I, like I told you before, it's not your job to become someone else's dream. Unless you're becoming your own dream. Your job is to become the best you possible. And if, and that's why I'm saying in this case with your ex, and if that being the best you possible ends up lining with the best them possible later down the line, cool. But you weren't doing it for them. You were doing it in the process of becoming the best you possible. And then we got together later. So that comparing a person is understand. And again, I was just having this conversation. There's nothing wrong with taking certain things about an individual and you say those are things that I like but guess what your ex is not the only person that gave you things that you like but your mental when you're dating is only on the person you broke up with so everything someone does you go well he or she wouldn't do that well guess what there are things that your mama did that you liked there are things that your daddy did that you liked or didn't like because we know like I told you to find out what you like if you can't figure that out, figure out what you don't like. And the opposite of that is what you like. Because for a lot of people, you tell them what is it you want, what do you... They don't know. They get stuck. But you say, what don't you want? Well, they can write a book. So in this particular example, and the reason I use that of your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister, whoever, they had certain things, people, strangers, people have done things that you just go, wow, I like that. That's cool. Or you've watched TV shows and saw certain things happen. You go, that would be cool. I really like that. See, those are things, guess what? Everyone that crosses your path is adding to your life on a daily basis. That's why I tell people when they talk about uh, 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 building your legacy. We're all building a legacy on a daily basis by everyone we come across. We have no idea about our legacy, where it's going, how much it touches. Everyone you come across on a daily basis, you are adding something to that person's pie. And they are also adding to yours. So what I'm getting to with this is understand everyone, not just your ex. Everyone is showing you things you like and don't like. Your focus when you're dating is you're only comparing, thinking that one person gave you so much. And everything you do is based on, I mean, with the new person you're looking at and comparing them to the old person. Get out of that and understand everyone has added value to your life. And thank your partner for the things that they added. And whether, like I said, it was good, bad, right or wrong, I'm not here to judge that for you. But understand, everyone is, is giving you something. And if you understand that, then you get that person again off that pedestal that maybe you put up there like they are your world and like they are the person that's making all of your decisions for you based on that relationship. You've had tons of relationships and you're going to have a bunch more. Maybe they weren't intimate, but you've had relationships. Take from all of them. It's not again to compare. It's to figure out what you want out of life. And then allow the new person that you're starting to date to create their own story, their own book. It's okay that you read books in the past. You've taken lessons from those books. You found out the things that you desire. And then as you read this new book, which means the person, and I'm just using book, you know, to, to symbolize the conversation, you're reading the new book. Folks, you don't want books to look to read the same, or why would you read it? If I read the, if I read the last book and it read as the same as the new book, why am I reading the new book? Although we we all know, <laughs> just kind of getting off the subject a little bit. But we all know if you go back and read the old book and you read it again, you're gonna be amazed all the stuff that you missed the first time you read it. Matter of fact, they tell you you have to read a book. I think it's like seven times. Uh, to really get most of the stuff that's in it because every time you go back to read it, it sounds like an, it's, it's like a new book. It's like, when did they put that part in there? Because as human beings, we blank out. We're the lead creatures. Your mind starts flowing as you, as you watch, listen to, the, to this conversation. You're going in and out. There's probably some things you caught, some things you didn't. You come back and listen to this again. You're going to hear some stuff that you go, I, I didn't hear him say that before. Folks, that's what everything. So it's the same thing in your relationships. Um, understand there, there, there's, uh, oh man, I got sidetracked. 
Yeah, it actually got a bunch of uh, messages start popping up on my screen, and that's what got me sidetracked there. It's like I was trying to ignore them, but they kept coming one after another, and it's like, okay. Uh, and again, that's why I had to stop uh, the conversation here. But um, again, you guys know I like to just be honest, authentic, and, and just flow. So it's the same thing with this. That's why I'm going to keep going. I'm not. I don't want to be one of the people that um, you look at everything is scripted, everything he goes back and he cleans up or whatever. It's like I want you to to, to see the real me. I got off. I, I I got off track there for a second, and so I had to let the messages stop. And uh, and then anyway, I'm back. But the bottom line, what I was getting to with the stories, is if you even went back to some of the uh, the old books, which is like even your old relationship, there's nothing wrong with going back to visit that if you're going there with an intent to to, to find out some more things in there that maybe you did miss. You guys, does that make sense? I mean, because in the old book, there's some things, trust me, just like your old relationship, there are some things you missed that maybe you could have added to the relationship to help it, help it. But at the same time, you don't stay stuck in that book and go, because there's not, that, that book is done. It's over with. So the only thing you're doing if you're going back and visit the same thing with your ex is you're going there with the intent to figure out what did I miss that I can add so that I'm, I'm, I'm more equipped, better equipped, I should say, um, for the next book, which is why you'll go to different books with advanced training, because the fact is you already know the basics. It's just like, again, like any subject. You can start with the basics and you're gonna go up to the different levels. You do the same thing in relationships. So the bottom line here, going to the new book, not to compare, because you, you went to the old book to get equipped so that you start to gain better input for the next books because you want to start reading things that's going to give you more, uh, uh, what should we say, give you more knowledge? Is that the word we want to use or, or help you grow? You guys know what I'm talking about. But the bottom line is that's what you're looking for. And so you're doing that in a relationship. What can this person bring? Yes, with the old stuff that I, I really enjoy, do they have some of that? Because I do want some of that, 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 that stuff in the book. It helps establish or reestablish uh, beliefs. Um, it, it helps me see that, yeah, okay, that, that, that is good. That, that's, that's a good message. Yes, and, and, and a lot of people will bring it in a different way. You go, I understand the concept. The way they brought it, I like that. I like that. And so, but the bottom line is, this is not about comparing. There's nothing wrong with going back to get the information. But folks, don't compare. It's not fair to you. It's definitely not fair to the other person. And you're going to keep yourself stuck when you're comparing. We only look back to get more insight so that we're better, we're better prepared for the next book that we read. And as you guys know, it ain't right. It ain't wrong. It is my opinion. Now, for those of you who haven't had the chance to run on over and, and check out everything I'm doing, run on over to ronsip5myers.online. Again, that's ronsip5myers.online. You can see all the things that I got going on. Anyway, I'll, I'll let you guys know, like I said, here within the next few weeks, I should have my um, app running inside the uh, app store. And I'll let you guys know once I get that done. I got to get some cleaning up on it because, uh, man, I sent it in. I, I was kind of sad. <laughs> Emotional time. But I, was, I actually did. Uh, I sent it in. It was denied by Apple. And so I have to go in and make the changes. And they're saying because I needed more content. But what it is, it's not that I didn't have a lot of content is they want content that will make you stay inside the app. And that's the part I got to go clean up. Like, what, what can I put inside the app to make people really have to come back to the app? Because most of the thing that's in there right now, they'll have to go to the app. Like, if you're just trying to find me, I can tell you to go to it, and they'll find me. And it's going to be called A Simpler Life. But they can go in there and find me. They can find A Simpler Life. But then once you get in there, everything you end up clicking you can click out of the app instantly and go to my other programs. That's the part they don't want. They don't want people to actually leave the app and go somewhere else. They want to try to keep you in the app. 
So I got to find something to keep them in the app so that it makes them happy while we're also able to link all of our other stuff. But anyway, I just went off on my own little, little drama there. But anyway, as you guys know, again, if you're not having fun, you should be doing something else. Folks, get out of the comparing business. If you do that, like I said before, your life will become an incredible, incredible place. Allow people to be the best them possible. Encourage them where you can. Accept them as they are. But don't compare them to others because they're not supposed to be anyone else but themselves. And make sure you give yourself a break because the same thing. Quit comparing you to others. All right, I'll talk to you guys soon. Take care. Bye-bye.